Okay, in this video I'm going to cover how the Raspberry Pi deals with overscan and how that can affect the games that you play with uh, RetroPie and running RetroArch or the other emulators in there. It's going to differ for everyone because depending on what video display screen you use it's going to have a slightly different spec. So you might find that um, it's absolutely fine on your TV and there's no change needed at all. But it's worth knowing where some of these settings are in uh, the Raspberry Pi. So to start with, there's a command you can put in to see what your current TV mode is. Now, um, I'm going to copy this text across and you can see there at the bottom it's a command called TV service and I'm going to put the parameter hyphen s after it and that will show me what the current uh, mode is connected to my TV. So in this case you can see that I'm running 1920 by 1080 so that's 1080p at 60Hz uh, progressive rather than interlace and it's the ratio is um, 16.9 so widescreen and that's that's what you're running at the moment so it's just a bit of information to see what the the Raspberry Pi is automatically detected and that's right because that's, um, that's effectively what my TV is and another command if you press up arrow to bring that line up again rather than dash s if you put dash n CEA and CEA just refers to basically that I've got it in a TV and press enter you can see a list of the screen modes that it thinks my TV can support so you can in the relevant file overwrite the auto detect setting and put a specific mode in one that it's uh, listed here so it's just a couple of options to see what uh, can be supported so generally um, on the TV when you connect your Raspberry Pi it will display the text and the console um, the console text quite clearly and it's all within the range so you see what you're doing but if it scrolls off you can edit this and most of it is all done in a single file so if we go to the config.txt file which is cd forward slash boot that just changes us to the boot directory so now we're in there you get a list of the files and the one we want to edit is config.txt so sudo to run it as administrator nano is the text editor and config.txt if we open that up um, most of that's on the screen there but we can scroll down in a minute the key areas that you'd want to change are these here the overscan so by default there's no um, sort of overscan kicking in but you could uncomment these by taking out the hash here and then put a value here. To start with you might want to put quite a high value so you can, it's really clear what the difference is, maybe something like 30. You could put 30 on each of those and it would, um, from the left, right, top, down, um, it would just bring in the, the text into that range. So uh, you can do that and reboot the Pi after you've saved this document. To save it just hit Control and X and it'll prompt you to say yes or no and uh, if you say no it just drop you out like that and then you can reboot the Raspberry Pi with sudo reboot. But we're just going to edit that file again so you can see the options. So you can change these overscan settings and that will change how the Raspberry Pi displays the screen uh, on your TV. Separately um, you can also see down here the HDMI group. Now the HDMI group and the HDMI mode basically force a particular, as it says there, force a specific HDMI mode and you can get the list of those on um, the Raspberry Pi config page and I'll put that in the comments so you can force it to be a particular um, setting. Maybe you always want to output in VGA or you always want to output in 720p so you can put that, that detail there. Okay so that's where you set the, the main overscan settings. I'll quit out of that and another area that I found useful was when I ran MAME, it always chopped off the top and the bottom of the arcade games just slightly, and it ignored effectively those settings we just looked at because it's got its own config settings. So if we go and look at the MAME emulator, which is MAME for all Pi, and if we change into this directory here, so CD, APT, RetroPi, Emulators, MAME for all Pi, hit enter and it's that directory. You can see in there, there is a main.cfg file. So I'm going to edit that in the same way we did earlier. sudo nano uh, main.cfg and in this file down here you see display border. Now by default that's on zero. If you change it to something like 24 seems to be pretty popular and work with most people. So if you run with 24 control X and save modified with Y 
that's um, prompting you what name should it save the file as, meme.cfg, press enter, and it quits out. So that saved that change. Now, when I run my meme games with that border, I'll bring up the value again. The value is display border with 24. It just brings it in slightly and it doesn't chop it off. I would do some video capture to show you what it looks like um, chopped off and after this change, but the video capture gets it all correctly because it bypasses the output obviously so there's not a lot of point in doing that. As a side note there's also a scanline setting here for main but it typically looks pretty bad on all the examples I've seen so a lot of people don't bother with that. Okay so that's how you change it in main specifically and you've seen how you change it in the Raspberry Pi main area um, as well. Also do look in the, comment, the description in the video here because I'll put a link into a post it's got a few more details about some other settings that you can change in that. Um, lastly, I just wanted to quickly cover the um, emulation station settings which are in this directory here. If we change to etc emulation station, this file's here, it's the essystems.cfg file we want to change. If we edit that, again sudo nano essystems.cfg that brings up that file. Now I'm going to look at the FBA, the Final Burn Alpha that runs Neo Geo games because that's um, got an interesting line in it that relates to the overscan. I search for FBA, that was Control W to bring up the search line at the bottom here and then I uh, just type FBA and it finds that in the list here. You can see that the command to run Final Burn Alpha it, it all begins and this is the case with most of the emulators it begins apt retropy supplementary run command run command sh and then it's got a value of one and what that does is set a particular video mode the one relates to uh, VGA I think it is so this will bring up a box um, that's a lot smaller than your screen typically and because it runs in that um, a smaller box often it can be quite faster because it doesn't have to do as much processing to run it um, but you might find that you want it full screen, you don't want it in this smaller box and if you change that to 720p which is mode 4 and again all of these modes would be listed in the, in the description area in the video so you can see um, how to do it, what these change are, what's 1080p, what's 720p, you can see the key for them all but if I change that to 4 and then quit out of here again with Control X that would, when I run Phone Burn Alpha, it'll be full screen for me rather than just using that small box window. So it's a quick way of changing the video mode for each individual emulator. You just go in this file, change the number that's after this, and the vast majority will all be one any, um, four anyway, but uh, some of them are set to one um, for various different reasons. But four seems to work pretty well for that, so you can just tweak that. And that's pretty much it. If I quit out of that with Control X, um, say yes I want to change that and then confirm the file name enter that's made that change as well so these settings that I've put and the information in the description should help you work out how to deal with overscan better in the Raspberry Pi and using RetroPi